life is full of paradoxes. You know, some people, they go on a quest of trying to be happy, right? The more that they try to be happy, the less happy that they are. Or the more that they try to be liked by others, the more alone that they end up being. And they don't understand that. So if you don't understand these 12 paradoxes I'm going to talk to you about in this video, then you're always going to be spinning your wheels in your life and you're always going to be struggling. So pay attention closely. I think we all have to go in there and just try this to like so one of the first paradoxes that I encountered, you know, in my journey of personal development, I was throwing a party when I was 19. I threw a party and I tried to invite as many people as I could, the people that I knew, and try to make it as great as possible, have a good ratio of uh, guys to girls, you know, just like a overall good party, right? Just like some people enjoy it. And it was about 60 to 70 people that showed up total to the party uh, in my parents' house. It was quite a big house, right, uh, my parents. And uh, it was great. There was a lot of people. A lot of people said afterwards, yeah, it was a great party. There was a lot of, uh, was a lot of good stuff going on, uh, great ambience, great people and all that. And it was great. People liked the party. But at the end of the party, of after all these people that were there, I felt kind of empty. I felt like none of the people that I invited were my friends and none of the people that came to the party were truly my friends. And I felt more lonely than before. Strange enough, right? That with all the people that I had around me, I felt more lonely than before. And I wondered why? Well, why did I feel less of a person? Why did I feel more lonely at that time when I was 19? And I realized it's because, well, it wasn't about the quality, the quantity of people, but the quality. And I realized that, you know, then what I realized to do afterwards is, you know, I stopped trying to make so many friends because I tried to make so many friends before. I stopped trying to be popular at school. I stopped trying to, um, you know, be the life of the party everywhere that I went. And I started just being okay with myself. I started uh, making, I stopped making so many friends. I just started, you know, focusing on the few friends that I had. The few, the few three to five close friends that I had, I focused all of my attention on these people. And since then, I'm much more happy. And since that moment, I realized that, you know what, um, my life was just better. And all of a sudden, I started attracting people of, that are a lot more like me. Instead of attracting random fake people uh, that came to my party that I don't even relate with, I started attracting genuine people that are genuinely like me, that genuinely uh, have something in common with me. And now my life has improved a lot. <clears throat> so the first, so the paradox was that the more that you try to be liked by others, the less people will want to be friends with you, the less people would actually respect you. The less that you try to be liked by others, the more that you're authentic to yourself, the more that you actually attract people like that. So I've already made a video before about paradoxes, but I'm just gonna give you a lot more here because this is very interesting and you know, we all wanna learn about these. So the first paradox here that I have for you is that the pursuit of happiness will make you unhappy. Yeah, the more you try to pursue happiness, the more you try to achieve happiness, the less happy that you become because you're trying to chase after like this, this uh, this goal that you know, doesn't really that's sort of far away in the distance that um, you think you're gonna get at some point, but it's sort of like the more that you run after it, the more that you run after the butterfly, the more the butterfly runs away from you, right? That's sort of what the chase towards happiness is. Happiness happiness is not a goal that you set, but it is the product of a life well lived. This is what I believe what Roosevelt said, and that. You know, you have to realize you don't have to find happiness. You, have, you don't have to seek happiness. You have to realize happiness right now. So realize that. The second paradox I have for you is that being social on social media will actually disconnect you more from people. It's pretty simple, but you know, uh, we sort of take it for granted. You know, we use social media every day, but we sort of forget that, you know, the goal of social media is not to connect uh, necessarily, you know, there's, there's certain uses to social media to keep track of, you know, certain events or to organize meetings, which is why I use social media mainly. But some people use it, you know, sort of to fill that void of lack of connection and they socialize more on social media than they do in real life. And that I don't want this to be the case for you, right? And the more that you use social media, you would think that you feel more connected with others, but actually you become more and more disconnected. Now, why is that? 
you end up more disconnected from people because you're only interacting with sort of like their facade or with sort of like you like text and it's sort of like this lack of human connection. It's sort of like you don't see their eyes, you don't see their facial expression, you don't see, you don't hear the tone of their voice when they're speaking to you. There's not that physical connection either. There's not this gap here that can be uh, so because of that you interacting through a screen you're not actually connecting with that person you interacting basically with facades of, that people put on the internet you're interacting with like you know their perfect profile or their perfect this or perfect that you're interacting with other people's facades other people's masks and the more that you interact with these masks the less in touch you are with reality right the more you interact with the fake, with what's on the internet, the less in touch you are with reality, the less in touch you are with reality, the more disconnected you are from actual people. The third paradox I have for you, right, is that learning to be alone, learning to be okay with yourself, learning to enjoy your time alone by yourself will make you better socially. So, well, why is that? It's because if you don't know how to be with yourself, if you're not okay with being with yourself, who the hell will want to be with you? Who the hell would want to sit down with you, have coffee with you, if you don't even want to have coffee with yourself? If you can't even stand the thought of being with yourself alone in a room? If you can't stand the thought of, you know, spending an evening by yourself doing nothing or, you know, reading a book or something and you feel lonely, right? Can you be okay with yourself at these moments? And it's a paradoxical thing because me, for example, you know, uh, I thought like, you know, what would make me good socially is I just go out there and make a bunch of friends and, you know, throw a party of 70 people like I told you at the beginning of this video. I thought that would make me better socially and you know, it kind of did. But you know what the best thing helped me socially is sort of like learn all these self-development concepts, right? Learn all of these, you know, develop my career, you know, like have a job, you know, get experience and like, you know, um, you know, learn about things, have certain different encounters in my life. It doesn't have to be with people, just be with things and events. And you know, the more that I grow older, the more that I have these experiences, the more that I grow myself, the more things I have to talk about in conversation. And now basically, if I have conversation with anyone, you know, on the street or whatever, um, now I'm confident that I have so many things I can talk about, so many things I can Whatever the person talks about, I can relate it to something that I know, you know, because I've expanded my knowledge. I've expanded, you know, the things that I know about, you know, myself and the world and uh, other people and myself. And because of that time I spent alone researching and, you know, reading a lot of books and all that, I have a lot of things to talk about. I can talk about, you know, this COVID thing. I can talk about my passions. I can talk about sports. I can talk about everything. And, it's because I've cultivated, you know, depth to my personality, right? I've cultivated who I am. And yes, of course, there's a social element to it. Okay, well, yes, you have to go out and be social at the same time. Um, you need the, the necessary social skills, you know, to get a conversation started. But beyond that, how do you cultivate, how do you cultivate the depth? How do you cultivate your personality? It's by diving into yourself and being fine with yourself and knowing yourself. So when you know yourself, you can convey that to other people clearly. And when you convey that to other people clearly, they tend to like that. They tend to respond well to it. The fourth paradox I have for you is that the only constant is change. The only constant is change. Look at your life and realize that all the things that you cling on to, your things that you want that will last forever, these things will always change, right? For example, it happens a lot in certain relationships that, you know, some people, you know, they, two people in a relationship, initially when they met, they were a perfect match, but then as they grow older, you know, I don't know, they, they get married or whatever, they marriage, and then they realize that they're sort of growing apart because one person is developing in one area than the other. You cannot hold on to things. Your body that is alive today will perish at some point. It will change. Your youthfulness, you will not remain young forever. At some point, you will become older. You will have a mustache. You will start growing white hair at some point. Even if you're 18 right now, maybe you don't envision it, but it will happen. So you have to just contemplate that, be fine with it, right? Understand that nothing is constant in life. Everything changes. The fifth paradox for you, the next paradox for you is that the only certainty in life is uncertainty. So that means that you cannot predict the future, really. Yes, you can try to 
predict what you think will happen, but what you think will happen remains only an idea. It only remains what you think will happen. It's not reality. It's not a fact. It's not a logical fact, right? And for that reason, you cannot, you know, you can only certain about your uncertainty about your future, right? And the only certainty you can have is that, you know, the thing you can be certain about is with your ability to deal with uncertainty, right? This is something you can be certain about. If you've already dealt with uncertainty and the unknown before, then be confident in your ability to deal with the unknown. That's the only certainty you might have, right? So for example, if I were to, you know, to drop my job and work on Nameless, I cannot be certain that I'll be able to make it the next month. I cannot, I cannot know, but I can be certain with my ability to deal with that uncertainty and deal with that chaos. And I'd even go as far as that, even the ability of you of being certain of being able to deal with uncertainty, even that is uncertain. Your, your ability to deal with uncertainty, even that is uncertain. Can you be okay with that? The number six paradox I have for you about life is that by leaving options open, you're actually making it a lot harder for you to decide. You know, there's a lot of people, they like to, you know, they, <laughs> I don't know, they, they start a career, they start studying a certain degree, they're like, oh, I want to be a doctor, or I, I don't know, I want to, oh, you know, I want to be a filmmaker, but you know what, I'm going to study doctor just to be extra sure that I have a job just in case, and then you go on this path, and then you try to do filmmaking like 30 minutes uh, a month when you do have time, because you, you're doing a fucking PhD that's going to take nine years of your life, and you need to study 80 hours per week, right? And you have no fucking time to do your filmmaking dream, whatever. And then you try to keep your options open. The more that you try to keep so many options open, the harder it is to decide. You know, there's this sort of uh, choice paradox thing where like, you know, the more they, they made like a test, like a, where uh, they made a study where they, there was an ice cream shop where they have like, I don't know, like, 30 different flavors of ice cream, okay? And then there was another ice cream shop where they only have like three to five uh, ice cream choices, right? And they, only, they could only choose one. And the study found that people who went to the ice cream shop with 30 different choices, they chose one and they felt like guilty that they felt like that they were missing out. Like they felt like guilty, ah oh, man, maybe I should have taken that other flavor or that other flavor. There's so many flavors. I don't think that was the best one. It's not even that good. And the people, and the, they enjoy their experience way less than the group who went to the ice cream shop with only three to five flavors. The one with the less choices, they just chose one choice. They're like, yeah, you know what? That's pretty good. I mean, uh, I enjoyed that one. And they didn't think twice about it and they enjoy their life a lot better. So can you see here how like maybe in your life you leave too many options open? You wanna do this, you wanna do that, you wanna do this, you wanna do that, and you cannot fucking choose, then you have to choose one. Limit your options. I only have one or two options, three options in my life right now, right? Um, you know, I, I leave my options pretty simple in my life, right? I don't leave the option of like, oh, maybe I should get back to school, but you know, I'm doing nameless. Oh yeah, maybe I should pursue a career in the banking industry, whatever. No, none of that. I'm just like, my options is like, okay, I wanna work on nameless. I wanna become a life coach, that's one option. Uh, the second option is, you know, maybe I can just become some sort of, I guess, uh, I don't know, just vlogger, YouTuber, just sort of do artsy videos and, you know, that's sort of my second option with Dameless, but it's still along the same line, right? And, uh, you know, in my friendships, I have basically, my options are small. It's like, I only have three to five friends. Those are my best friends. I don't give a shit. I don't need 50 friends like, like everyone else. I don't need that many friends. I just need the quality friends I need. And I'm fine with it. And if you need help with choosing the right option, you can book a free consultation. Call with me, link in the description below. The seventh paradox of life is probably something you know very, very well. And it is that in order to succeed in life or in anything, you have to go through failures. The only way to succeed is to go through failures. Actually, that would be a more accurate way of putting it. Because with every failure along the way, you hopefully learn from it, right? If you analyze what you did wrong, you learn from it and you get better from it. 
And the more that you fail, the one step closer that you get towards your goal. I don't think this needs more explanation. Number eighth paradox about life is that it is only when you accept your death that you face your fear of death that you can live a fulfilling life. This is a hard one to swallow, right? Because we're we all trying to escape death to some extent. We're sort of in this society of the denial of death. You know, we you know live in the present moment. We enjoy you know drugs and alcohol and partying, and we do all these hedonistic things, which is you know fine to some extent, right? Uh, but the problem is that if you get too indulged in that, it's sort of like a way of escaping the future. And if you're escaping the future. Uh, you're running away from your inev inevitable death. You're trying to put your inevitable death in the closet like it's never going to happen, right? And I mean, uh, it's not to get pessimistic and like, you know, get down on yourself that you're gonna die, but it's to realize that your time is limited. What are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with the time that you have life, you have left in your life? And it's only when you're okay with the future, you're okay with the possibility of death, that now you know you can live life fully because now if you're okay with death then you'll be more courageous if you're okay with your own inevitable death you'll be okay with taking risks with going all out in your life because you only have one life why not try and give it a shot and become a pro esports player league of legends player whatever you only have one shot at life why not give it your all and try to become this musician become this artist become this youtuber and do that for the rest of my life because I only have that one fucking life. If I waste it doing something I hate for the rest of my life, then what am I really doing with my life? You're denying the future. You're denying your own death. You're denying the one life that you truly have. When you deny your death, you only deny your life. When you deny your death, you also deny your own life. So keep that in mind. Number nine paradox, the nine paradox I have for you about life and the universe is that the more that you know about something, the more that you learn about something, the more you realize how little you actually know. This is called the Dunning-Kruger effect, where basically um, at the beginning, when you learn about something, you think, you, oh yeah, you're the expert, you know everything about it, and now you brag about all the knowledge that you have, right? I'll put a graph about the Dunning-Kruger effect here so you can see it. So it's Basically, when you start learning something, you believe you're so confident, like you're absolutely uh, the greatest. But it's, this is actually the point when you know the least about something, right? And then afterwards comes the dip. When like the more that you start learning, you're like, oh wait, this thing I'm trying to learn about life and public speaking and whatever, this is actually much harder than I thought. And you realize how little you actually know, how much more you have to learn about that. And then you feel stupid. You feel stupid and the more that you sort of research things, the more you realize there is more to know. It's like this unconscious incompetence, right? You think you're good, but really you don't know that you're bad. That you think that you're good. And then as you learn more, you realize actually I'm pretty bad, fuck. <laughs> I actually suck at that thing. And then the more and more and more that you learn, then yes, there's possibility of resolving that paradox, but it is really, you know, there's, infinite things to know about the universe. So this is why this can become tricky. The number 10 paradox about life is that fear is probably a sign that you should do it. Yeah, <laughs> fear is probably a sign that you should do it. You know, yes, I understand you know, in the past, you know, caveman times when there were actual dangers in life, like fear of a lion eating you and fear of, you know, getting, uh, you know, getting hit on by, a, I don't know, a thunder tornado and you die. This, those were legitimate concerns at the time, right? But now in our first world country, right? If you were watching this from first world country, which is what I'm guessing now, uh, life is pretty safe. The world is pretty safe right now in most pl places. And you should be taking more risks because nothing is inherently really dangerous, physically dangerous. It's more sort of like a mental trick that we play on ourselves that the things that we want to achieve are dangerous. That going out there, putting yourself on YouTube and you know risking the possibility of getting ridiculed by your friends or your family is dangerous, right? It's not true. It's a fabrication of your mind. And really the fear, really it just shows that you're at the edge of your comfort zone. So 
because it shows that it's a true highlight that this is the thing you should be doing right because you're afraid of it you probably should be doing that fucking thing you should be fucking doing it so go ahead fucking do it number 11 paradox of life is that the more needy that you are towards a person or thing the more likely you are to drive that person or thing away there's this concept in uh, the book Transurfing, Reality Transurfing by Vadim, I forgot his name. And he's, you know, sort of like a sort of a meta spiritual sort of philosophical book about things. And he says that, you know, when you really need a thing, what you're creating is excess potential. Basically like, you know, you want this thing, but because like you're forcing it too much, it sort of creates this excess of potential that basically it's just basically gonna ruin, ruin your chances of getting it, right? And, you know, it's you're very angry at someone, right? And you really want something to be fixed. Let's say an angry customer calls saying like, oh, you know, fuck, it's your, it's your fault that I'm in debt and you should have, you know, you should have not ruined my credit score and all that, which is what I get pretty much every day that I work. And it's like the more excess potential, the more needy that they are to get that thing, their credit score resolved, the more angry that they get, the less likely it is that as a bank, we're going to do something about it. But the people who are nice, the people who are asking nicely and they become very calm and they don't need you about it. They're like, you know what? It would be nice if you could help me out. If not, that's fine. Usually those are the people we are able to help. Same in your life, right? If you really need, you want to really go on that date for that, for that girl and you know, you message all the time, yo, let's go out or when are you free? And if you show that over that too much of that neediness, it's going to drive her away, All right? It's going to drive that person away. And the 12th and final paradox of life is probably one of my favorite ones. And it is that less is more. Less is more. So have you ever been in a conversation, you know, in a group, whether in a classroom setting, and there's this class clown who always raises his hands, his hand and says like, yo, oh, this is shit. <laughs> and it says stupid crap. People laugh, but like, you know, half of the classroom is kind of fed up with this shit, right? And saying dumbest shit, right? And you don't want to hear it, right? Um, so then that's kind of stupid, right? And you're like, why is he doing that, right? And you kind of lose respect for that guy. But then once in a while, like there's that one shy guy, let's say that one shy person, and he just raises his hands and he's just like, wait, I disagree with that. Let's say the teacher says something, he said, that the only time he raises his hand in like the whole semester, he's like, wait, I disagree with that. And he says his thought, his train of thought. And then you'll see everyone turn their heads toward that person, that shy guy, that shy person, and they will listen. Why? Because less is more. The more that you speak, the more that you, you risk the chance of seeming foolish. This is what Robert Greene said in his book, The 48 Laws of Power. The more that you speak, the more that you might end up looking like a fool. The more that you speak, the less that people will value your words. But the less that you speak, the more that people will actually listen to you when you do actually speak. So this is the law of scarcity. The more something is scarce, the more value that we have, that, that, the more perceived value that we have towards that thing or person, right? And you have to pay attention to that in your life. So if you love this video about the 12 paradoxes of life, then you're going to love this playlist here about the advanced topics of personal development. So I'll see you there. Nothing in life is either black or white. Everything comes in gradients. And if you continue to define life in black or white, you will always be confused. You will always be lost. 